Welcome to our first writing lesson. Today we have two learning intentions. The first is to plan a narrative which follows a given pattern. And the second is to make effective notes without writing the entire story. So basically, we're just getting our ideas together to write a story based kind of on the outline of another story that we've read. So what kind of a story are we writing? Well, have you ever heard a story about how the something got the something? For example, how the camel got its hump, or how the firefly got its light, how the ostrich got its long neck, or how the tiger got its stripes. All of these stories typically follow a certain pattern. They involve characters who are animals, who can speak, and they tell the story of how that animal got a particular feature. What we're going to do is study one example of such a story, and then use that example to help us form a story of our own. The example story we're going to consider is called How the Zebra Got Its Stripes. It says, there are many stories and questions on how the zebra got his stripes. And here in Africa, which is where this story comes from, one of the most well-known is from the San Bushman people of the Namibian Kalahari Desert. Many African fables and stories are told of the wild animals in Africa to explain their unique look or behavior. So how did the zebra get his black stripes? Or is it white stripes? Well, let me tell you the fable. Long ago, when animals were still new in Africa, the weather was very hot, and what little water there was remained in a few pools and pans. One of these remaining water pools was guarded by a boisterous baboon, who claims that he was the lord of the water, and forbade anyone from drinking at his pool. One fine day, when a zebra and his son came down to have a drink of water, the baboon, who was sitting by his fire next to the water hole, jumped up and barked in a loud voice, Go away, intruders! This is my pool, and I am the lord of the water. The water is for everyone, not just for you, monkey face, the zebra's son shouted back. If you want some of the water, you must fight for it, returned the baboon in a fine fury, and in a moment the two were locked in combat. Back and forth they went fighting, raising a huge cloud of dust, until with a mighty kick, the zebra sent the baboon flying high up among the rocks of the cliff behind them. The baboon landed with a smack on his seat, taking all the hair clean off, and to this very day he still carries the bare patch where he landed. The tired and bruised young zebra, not looking where he was going, staggered back through the baboon's fire, which scorched him, leaving black burn stripes across his white fur. The shock of being burned sent the zebra galloping away to the savanna plains, where he has stayed ever since. The baboon and his family, however, remain high up among the rocks, where they bark defiance at all strangers, and when they walk around they still hold up their tails to ease the smarting rock burn on their bald, patched bottoms. Now, what I really love about this story is that it's so silly, but the author has clearly taken the time to think through what events would be necessary to explain the appearance of the two characters. So they started out with the two animals not looking how we know them to look, and then they created a scenario which would explain why the zebra has stripes, and also a little extra, why the baboon has a bald butt. <laughs> if you don't know what a baboon is, go ahead and look it up. They're quite funny looking monkeys. Now, we are going to follow this example set here of starting with a character, a main character that is. This particular writer chose to use two animals, but we're going to focus on just using one. We're going to start with that character looking a way that they don't currently look. And then we're going to build up some events and some situations that will explain why that character, that animal, looks the way it does now. Of course, just like this author has done, we have to set the scene. In this case, it was set a long time ago in Africa, and there was some description of what it was like. It was hot, there was just a little bit of water. All of these descriptions are important to the story, so we're going to come up with some important descriptions of our own. And then we'll set out the events. We can include dialogue as well, just as this author has done. And of course, of course we have to have a problem and a solution. And the ending, of course, will explain why the character looks the way they do now. 
So what's going to happen is that everyone is going to write their own story. I'm going to plan an example story and write an example story through these lessons, but you are going to have to pick one of the story prompts you're about to see and write a narrative following the structure of how the zebra got its stripes. In just a moment, you're going to see the prompts that you can pick from and also a planning sheet that will help you map out your story. So here are your options. You could write about how the agouti got its booty <laughs> or how the iguana got its striped tail, how the parrot got its blue wings, or how the bat got its wings. Take a look at the images of the animals. If you want, you could also pick a different feature, or you could pick a different animal entirely. I, I don't mind at all. If you want to pick a completely different animal that's not on this list and come up with a feature for it and write a story based on that, that's absolutely fine. This is the story planner that we'll be using to map out the important parts of our narrative. First, you're going to need to come up with a character, the main character, the animal that you're writing about, but also there are going to be, need to be some supporting characters, just like how in How the Zebra Got Its Stripes there was also the baboon, just to help move the story along. Then of course you're going to have some description of the setting, um, you'll map out the events in the plot, as well as the resolution. And finally at the bottom, I want you to think of some special descriptions to include. Specifically, I want you to think if there are any similes that you can include in your writing. Using similes is a great way to enhance your description. And it kind of, I don't know, it just really spices up your writing. So that's our like extra goal today, to include some similes. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use this planner to plan out my story. So here's my story planner. I decided to go with the prompt, how the agouti got its booty, but of course I had to add in the word big because <laughs> I thought that would be a bit more funny. Now you all know what an agouti looks like. They have that really round bottom, but the front of them is skinny. So I decided to do a story about how it got that shape. Now the characters in my story are Gogo the agouti and Mr. Joe. In my planning sheet, all I've done is put three details about each character, one of which is their name. So Gogo the agouti, that's his name, He's mischievous, and he's short and slim. So I gave his name, a character trait that describes his personality, and then a short physical description. That's all I really need in my planning sheet. When I start to write my story, I'll build more detail. My other important character is Mr. Joe. He owns a property with lots of mango trees, and he hates Go-Go. Those are the most important details about him for right now. Everything else I'll add in the actual story when I'm writing it. But these details just help me plan the broad picture of my story. Then I moved on to the setting. I said I want my story to take place on Mr. Joe's property a long time ago. It's going to have lots of trees and it will have the sweet smell of juicy mangoes. So those are just some of the details I decided I wanted to include. Something else I wanted to include, a really good description, so I drew an arrow down to my description to include box, is that the mango trees stood tall and majestic like silent giants. This is a line that I'm gonna copy word for word from my planning sheets into my story. Everything else is just a rough outline. It's not really gonna end up in the story the way it looks right now, except for this line. I really wanna use this because I came up with this simile and thought it would be really nice to include. I want you guys to do the same when you're doing your planning sheet as well. Come up with at least one simile that you really want to include. It could be a description of the setting or of one of the characters. Now after the setting, I moved on to the problem or the, the plot. So how the story, the events of the story and um, what takes place. It starts with Gogo stealing mangoes from Mr. Joe. Now the reason Gogo is called Gogo is because whenever he steals mangoes from Mr. Joe, other animals will warn him when Mr. Joe is coming. So they'll go, 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 and tell him to run away. So he's gotten so used to hearing that that that's just the name he goes by, Gogo. -Go. Now Mr. Joe gets tired of Gogo -Go stealing all his mangoes, so he sets a trap. That's the next big event. Then Gogo -Go gets stuck in a fence when trying to escape. So when I, I'm still kind of working out the details of what the trap is going to be, but what I know is that Gogo -Go is going to get out of the trap and try and escape the yard. And when he's trying to escape the yard, he gets stuck in the fence, which is super important because when he's in the fence, he almost gets caught. And the resolution, which is going to be how he gets his big booty, <laughs> Gogo -Go squeezes out just in time, but going through the fence changed the shape of his body. So I want it to be that as he squeezed through, it made the front of him even skinnier. And then like all the fat in his body just kind of got pushed towards the back end. 
So he ends up having a big butt. And then maybe the, the fence will pop, and that's how all all of his weight got pushed towards his back end. And then finally, for the resolution, he only steals fruit in the early morning now, because he doesn't want to Mr. Joe to ever catch him again. So he's really a lot more careful. He learned his lesson. Well, not really. He's, he's still stealing, but he's being a lot more sneaky about it. And I wanted it to be kind of true to life, because usually I see agoutis in the early morning or in the evening just before the sun goes down. So there you have it. That's my planning sheet. Notice I haven't written paragraphs. It's just bullet points. I've put in a few sentences here and there, but they're not very long sentences. They're not going to be copied straight into my story. They are just serve as a reminder to me of what I want to include. So your independent task today is going to be to create your own story planner like this one using one of the prompts that I've given you or a prompt that you come up with on your own. If you have another animal that you really want to write about, go right ahead and do that. Alrighty, before you go, I want you to take a quick look at the success criteria for planning your story, because this is what I'm really going to be using to grade your work. All you're doing today and turning in tomorrow is the planning sheet. Please do not go and write your entire story. That will be our next lesson. For today, you're just doing the planning sheet. That's why this says success criteria for planning a how the blank got its blank story. Pause the video here and read through that success criteria. I'm not going to read it to you. You have eyes in your face. You can do it yourself. And I made it big enough that you can read it on your own. Go through it. And then when you're done planning your work, check against the success criteria and think to yourself, did I get a smiley face for this or would I get a sad face? Did I do a, a good enough job or is there room for me to improve? When you're satisfied with it and your parents have checked it over, you're going to take a picture of it and send it to me. I will give you some feedback once I've had the chance to read through it.